Hello, welcome back to Into the Breach. This is episode 15. So, where are we? We have one more mission to do before the corporate HQ. We have only four reps so far. But so far, we've, uh, we've failed to get one reactor core, which is unfortunate. We are down to three grid on the uh, three power on the power grid, which is not ideal. I would like to get that back up. Uh, I would prefer to save my rep for spending on reactor cores if need be. But if I could get one power back before we tackle the corporate HQ, we'd probably be looking a lot healthier. The uh, Unfortunately, we can't get the acid tip on this because that would make it much more effective. But we just don't have the power at the moment. So, I'm just going to review these missions and see which one I want to do next. So we're going to nano silos, kill at least seven enemies. Uh, yeah, this is not a squad that's good at killing. So, probably not. There is lots of acid around, which the enemies can might step in. But even so... On the previous island, we failed a couple of uh, kill seven enemies objectives in a row, so I'm not keen to tackle those again. With our cryo cannon, we're very good at uh, disabling enemies, but it's just not really good at, at killing them. We'll freeze them, and then no problem solved, but uh, that doesn't result in death. Scrap heap. Take less than three grid damage. Well, we want to do that anyway. If we take three grid damage, we'd, we lose the game. So that's, that's an obvious uh, move. Uh, lots of pits of acid to push enemies into the drown, but probably very little reason for them to be next to them, unless they're attacking us. Uh, spread of buildings here is going to make it quite awkward to use the Yannis cannon that shoots both ways. Can't really use it anywhere in this zone, and not up and down here, unless there happens to be enemies in the way. That's. On the other hand, enemies attacking these buildings will be sitting in this row, which is free to fire both ways, so it might work out. Venting center. Block back spawning three times and protect the coal plant. So it's got a conveyor belt that helps protect the coal plant. Nothing really to protect these. Uh, can shoot up and down this way, can shoot up and down that way. Got some room to shoot up here if there's any vector around up here. How are we doing for hit points? Three, three, four. So we block spec spawning three times with ourselves. That's, that's hit points taken there. Could be doable. I'm not a big fan of conveyor belts, they're a little bit unexciting, but this one looks like it shouldn't be a problem. And finally, the Wasteland, which is the only one of these which has two rep instead of one rep, one power. Kill four enemies inflicted with acid. And there's an acid tank. What's our damage output? Two. Two. And of course, zero. So, if we shoot enemies with acid, and then kill must hit them, that's four damage. And there's only four enemies we have to kill that way, so that's, you know, at worst, one each turn. That should actually be doable. The acid tank is always always a benefit. In terms of Yannis Cannon, well, we've got room to fire both ways up here and up and down on this rank, but not so much up here where the action is. Oh, this area is safe. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. Let's hope we uh, can fulfill the objective. This means we're going to miss out on that bonus power for the next mission, but you know, our goal is to to win, to not take any building damage. So let's see if I can achieve that goal or whether we will fail in this entire timeline. Right off the bat, we got a blast scion, which is annoying. That means these enemies, or all the vet, will explode when they die dealing damage around them. So if they're sitting next to a building, we can't kill them. The good news is we can't freeze them in that situation. Uh, there's Digger and a Hornet, so we can actually sit all the way across here, and that'll block the Digger from getting anywhere near the buildings, but the Hornet will probably fly right past us. So we might be looking to Acid and kill the Hornet, as well as killing the Scion and just avoiding the Digger this turn, I think is probably the starting plan. So, let's... 
And there's really no reason for our units to go in any particular pattern. So let's just put them down. And get started. Well, that's a nuisance. So, we can't actually reach the Blast Ion to kill it this turn. Because the Diggers put bloody rocks in our way. Now, it is just an ordinary Digger, so luckily I can kill it. Uh, but doing so obviously means then I can't. I don't have any way to kill the Scion. And the upper hornet, and really, we want to, we want to kill. Ideally, we would would acid and kill the hornet. Problem is, uh, undo that move. Killing the hornet. If we acid it, then kill it. How would that work? We'd have to move here with the acid tank to shoot it, then here and hit it. Uh, whether we push it or not. We would have a choice. When we kill it, it will explode and hit one of these buildings. We've only got three grid damage. I can't really afford to do that right off the bat. That would not. That would not be good. So then what? I kill the blast iron if I freeze the hornet, and that means we're not getting one of our acid enemies this turn, unless I can acid. The digger before I shoot it. Just not sure there's enough space to do that. They can't get another angle on it. And unfortunately, both ends here is already blocking access. Both ends was here, no problem. Shoot it without it, move back. But we can't do that. Alternatively, if we move Omar somewhere else, say. No, that's no good. I'm thinking, if we move Omar somewhere else kill the digger, then shoot the blast zone, but we can't we can't actually access the blast zone. We need in your face to move up here because the rocks are gonna be in the way. And if we've already moved both ends it doesn't get another move. There is a question. If we freeze a scion, does its passive bonus get negated? I expect the answer is no. I would like to find out. But if I'm wrong, you know, if it freezes and negates its uh, its explosive power, great, that's that's brilliant for us. We get to kill the it and the digger, and get to kill the hornet with acid. One out of four. But if it doesn't, then we basically fucked up our turn. Actually, even if we do freeze it, we're still stuck. I'm frozen. And being it's only the first turn, I don't really want to use my reset in case the freeze doesn't work out. So here's what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm just going to go with what I know I can do rather than what I hope I might be able to do. I can freeze the hornet. And I can kill the digger. And also break eyes there. And the digger exploded, so we took one damage. I should have moved back before doing that, shouldn't I? That was a bit silly. Never mind. However, this gives us the ability now to come here and kill the Scion. So next turn we can start throwing us at enemies with any luck. Actually undo that move. If I kill it from here, that's better. Or, or even here. Yeah. That means I can actually use my acid tank this turn. It always shoots in a straight line, but it will hit the edge of the map. So I can actually drop acid on one of these spawns, so we have a enemy pre-acided next turn. That'll help with the objective. Hornet, Alpha Leaper, Leaper. Oh, and the Hornet acided itself. Well... This is good news for us, I think. Maybe, maybe not. We can free ourselves from the Leaper. Uh, 
Well, move out of the way first. We can free ourselves from the leap bar. And that will hit the Hornet, but it won't kill it. We can definitely acid this Alpha Leaper before we kill it. It's, this does one damage, that does five damage, so this is the threat. We'll just reduce its hit points to one, and then... I guess leave it for next turn. Can't be out of the way with either of these units. And I don't see any point freezing anything, unless... Unless Prospero could get to a spawn, sit on a spawn, and maybe freeze a building, but can't actually reach it. I think Prospero is just going to move up to be more useful. Let's start with Asset. So should be two out of four? No, one out of four. This will be done too. Right, get out of there. Get to there. Two out of four. There's another one with Asset to it. This should be three out of four next turn. And we're going to take one damage. We're still reasonably healthy. I do have an action available, but I have nothing that I can usefully do with it, so I'm not going to freeze myself and be stuck in turn. Carry on. Ouch. Firefly, Alpha Firefly, and Hornet. Well, sadly, the, uh, oh, the Alpha Firefly did ask itself. That's brilliant. None of them are going for the buildings. That is also brilliant. So, what do we want to do? I could kill... I could acid that and kill it, perhaps. I could block a spawn and freeze the firefly. That's probably a good idea. It just gets out of the way. What's my damage here? Two. So I only do four damage to the Alpha Firefly. I can move the Acid Tank out of the way so it's not going to threaten anything. I would be blocking a spawn and take one damage. If I bash it from there. If I bash it from here. Or there. I won't take damage. But if I'm planning to block a spawn here, I don't, probably don't want to block both. We can kill our choice of the Hornet or the uh, Wounded Hornet. There's no problem with those. Just need to. Oh, no, we can't kill this one. If we move there and shoot, we hit a building. That's no good at all. So I think we just kill this hornet. Alternatively, we kill the firefly, but I can freeze the firefly. We have two more enemies to kill, two more acid enemies to kill, and two more turns, this one and the next, to do it on. So I'm not overly concerned. And if he's on one hit point, he should be pretty easy to kill anyway. Now it would be nice, it would be very nice if Omar could actually sit between these enemies, kill both with one hit, or hit this with four hit points, kill that one, and then we come and bash it for one more hit point and kill it. That would be, that would be the ideal, but there's no way to get between them. The only way we get between them is by bashing here. Well, that's possible. Bash that Hornet. That clears a path for Omar to sit between these two. Shoot them both. That one's dead. That one's mostly dead and sitting here. And shooting this way, incidentally. For all the good that does. That leaves this Firefly. Which is doing what? Nothing really of interest to us. It's just shooting at an empty spot on the map. We'll move the we'll move the acid tank. One dead, one sorry, two dead, one mostly dead, one well we might as well just shoot acid at it. For lack of anything better to do, but it'll make it easy to kill. We'll, one hit from either will do it. Uh, we could sit here, I guess, take that shot without ice, an ice ability. For lack of anything more exciting to do. Let's do that. He's dead. He's dead, he's mostly dead. I'm not going to block the spawn this time because uh, I would take damage from the spawn because the ice would be broken by the Alpha Firefly shot. So instead, I'm just going to sit up here, tempt the enemies, I'm going to freeze the building because I can. 
Final turn. Thanks for that. Missed. Another Alpha Firefly. And another Firefly. That's great, I like Fireflies, they're so straightforward to deal with. In fact, they can be uh, downright easy to deal with. Look at this, they've both got acid on them. That's two kills. Thanks for lining up so nicely, guys. Uh, so we're now, we've hit the objective five out of actually, out of four needed. We can... Well, we can acid that one, but we won't be able to kill it. Unless... We acid it from this direction. Then we kill it because we also push it. Leaving us with one Firefly here with no purpose. Let's just freeze him. Problem solved. No buildings hit. That's great for our grid defense. Both objectives achieved. Or both stars. That was easier than I was expecting. So that's six rep. We still only have three grid power, so we're not in the best shape for the uh, corporate HQ attack. But we'll have to make do. We didn't get any Tide Pods, so we don't have any new reactor cores, so we might as well just jump right in. We have a five flight leader to destroy and the corporate tower to protect. Some nice bits of acid, which we may or may not make any use of. We may or may not be able to make any use of. Firefly leader, six hit points. It shoots in both directions, just like our, our cannon, but it does four damage, not two. And a blast zone, causing things to explode on death. Both, neither of these are quite as nice as I would like. We'll have to see how we, how if quickly we can kill this leader, because he will otherwise be quite a problem for us. Who's got the most movement? He's got five, five, four. Let's swap those two around. And here we go. The goal initially, we do want to kill the blast zone as soon as we can. Other than that, neutralize any other attacks if we can. Unfortunately, the Firefly leader has. Uh, well, neither Firefly is in a position where we can push him. He is right near the edge, but we can't actually get here to push it. So we're going to have to probably, I think, freeze that one to get it out of the way. The leader won't drown in water because he's massive. Or, or in bits of acid, for that matter. So. Either of these could come up here. Well, preferably not Esther because of uh, acid damage. But either of them could kill... Last time. Question is, how do we freeze this firefly, or indeed that building? Either either is effective to neutralize that attack, but preferably firefly, and still break out of the ice for the next turn. I'm not sure it's going to work. We need to also do something about this Firefly Leader's attack. We can't push it here, because then it'll hit these buildings. We could push it to here, in which case it shoots up and down this line. Now, unfortunately, Prospero sitting there can't actually freeze the Firefly. So although we get broken out of the ice by the, by the Leader, it doesn't actually help us solve the problem. There's a spawn there, but again, too close to freeze. And this spawn doesn't really help us. I may just have to live with being frozen for a turn, which I do not like. Is there any other way? So, if I'm doing a bash from here, I can't even get there. Oh, neither of us can get there. Oh, that's no good. All right, change of plan. Change of plan. And I think the change of plan works better. What if uh, Prospero can't get there? Damn it. Prospero ca can't even get there. What if Prospero had one more movement point? This plan would work better. 
So, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say what I was thinking. So, what I was thinking is, we first bash the Firefly leader for two hit points and push it there. And then we shoot it with both ends to push it to here. It just, it's hit, it's shot in this direction, kills the Blast Zone for us. That's great. That's two, that's two problems solved. His attack's neutralized, it's taken lots of damage. And I was thinking, the other thing we could do then is freeze the Firefly. Or the building from from one of these spots, but we can't reach that. So my next question is, can we then somehow use the back blast from Omar for that second to unfreeze us? Omar, uh, Prospero could be anywhere up here, but none of those let us freeze this. We would really need to be here. And you know, I don't see any way we can actually get there. So once again, I think I'm probably just going to have to take the hit. Well, I can get there. I can sit up here, no problem. But I have to move first, which means I can't sit there. And now uh, Omar's gonna fire first to push that and then Esther will come here and hit it again and push it again. So we're left with Prospero frozen in ice. On the plus side, Prospero will leave frozen in ice. We should be it should be relatively easy to get him out again. We may even come under attack from an enemy, which would be quite convenient. And this Firefly would be frozen. Firefly leader almost dead. Blast Scion dead. So it's not actually a terrible situation to be in. We only have three enemies to deal with. Given that, it will only be three enemies. I think it's probably worth taking the shot. Taking the uh, ice. So let's do it. Dash can. We'll do four damage, yeah, that'll kill it nicely. And then we only need to hit the five leader once more to kill it. Thank you. So we have an alpha leaper and an ordinary leaper. Well, unfortunately neither of them decided to attack us, so we're still stuck in ice. Um, which is less than perfect. We can repair ourselves to get us out, so we won't be stuck next turn. But we have two attacks to deal with. The Firefly fire leader is looking like it wants to uh, free up the alpha, which we just froze. That's not so nice. Obvious move is that. But it's not really very good because we move from the sleeper hitting that building hitting this building. It would kill the leader. And it would stop that from getting freed. But we need to actually kill this leaper or otherwise neutralize its attack. We can't freeze it because we're frozen. Uh, what else is an option? We can't actually get up here to hit it the other way with either of our units actually. Oh dear. Oh dear. Both of these are equal threats. Both of them are looking to do two grid damage, and neither of those is something I can do, I can actually afford. I can't afford two grid damage. We're only on three. We'll just be one hit away from death then. Yes, if we should hopefully succeed the rest of this mission with more, no more damage, and then spend all our uh, rep on powering up the grid. Less than ideal less than ideal. Fortunately I, can, unfortunately, I can't really see any other way to resolve this. We can't push the Leaper to somewhere where it won't hit the building. We've only got two units to move. 
I don't see any way to do something clever and also free Pros Prospero from the ice. We could, of course, push it into the building ourselves. That's actually better than letting it attack because that's only risking one building damage, so... The downside of that is we don't get to use the double shot and also kill the leader, so we'll have an Alpha Fire fly in one of the spawns here to deal with the Gam. So we'll have to freeze him again. But, one building damage is better than two. However, there's another problem here. We're looking to do two building damage ourselves if we take that shot. So, I guess Omar can sit here for this shot. And Esther can sit here for this one. Or, if I want to take the damage, I can actually block both spawns and still get that attack off. That leaves us with... A dead leaper, sorry, dead alpha leaper, a dead leaper, a near dead leader, and an alpha that's actually under acid right now to deal with. Whether we freeze it or whether we kill it, it will be two enemies this turn. That means we'll have several spawns next turn to worry about. So I don't think we'll be able to keep blocking them. I'm thinking I want to let one of the spawns happen. First things first, let's let's pray for the 70% to roll in our favour. It won't, but, you know, we can always hope. 143 casualties lost. It's better than two buildings. But not by much. We're still a dangerously low on grid power here. So free the ice. And... Now we're going to have one more spawn. The leader's gonna free his friend. It's a digger. It's probably the exact unit I didn't want. And he's just sitting exactly where he was. He's not even threatening Prospero in any useful fashion. So, and we're kind of stuck up here. Also, not very useful. Well, good news is we can sit here, freeze the digger, and block the other fireflies' shot without ice and not take damage. So that's probably what Prospero's going to do. And the case is that it means the digger's no problem. Of course, it means moving around is a big problem, but what can you do? Then Esther can kill the firefly leader, finally. That'll be objective one complete, and objective two to finish in the next turn. And then both ends has nothing to do. We could block a spawn and shoot a rock. Which we could do before with freezing the digger so we actually hurt it for whatever reason. Uh, also that would free up uh, places here to push enemies into the acid perhaps. If I could get a pushy, if I could get Omar up here, Omar could shoot that but into the acid, uh, sorry, into the water, but it would also hit this. That's not good. What's going to spawn there? If it's another firefly, great, we can shoot into the water. Oh, we're sitting on a spawn too. Yeah, the spawn's all over here. I guess we're going to take one damage anyway. I guess we're going to still block one of these. Alright. Digger only does one damage, so we're just going to have to take that. I don't want to sit in acid instead to attack from this side. Actually, we're not going to attack it. We're going to freeze it. What am I talking about? Let's freeze the digger. And let's just get a rock out of the way so we've got a little more room to play. Let's see what comes up. We get broken out of our ice, we have our opponent, and another Alpha Firefly. It's actually good news for us. So, that's great news for us. The Hornet we can kill. The Alpha Firefly is positions itself right next to Acid. And we can just freeze him again. Exactly where we froze him last time. That's kind of uh, come full circle. And we're frozen in the exact same spot with you frozen from the previous time as well. I, li I like the symmetry there. 
throws herself on the first turn and the last turn with the same enemy in the same spot. Kill the Hornet. And kill the other Pipe Pipe. One grid damage taken. Corporate HQ saved. Pipe Pipe leader dead. I'll take that. I'll call that a win. Two rep. Most of the civilians protected. Bunch more XP. They're getting close to leveling up the final time. Uh, we now have eight reputation to spend. So for two power cores and two spare, or one power core and a whole pile of grid defense. Uh, power grid. Unfortunately, we don't have anything else, anything spare here that we can sell. Let's just see what the weapons on, on offer are. I don't think I'm going to buy anything. I think I'm going to get one core and a bunch of grid power. But what do we have? We have death shrapnel. Brute class weapon fires a non-damaging projectile, pushes tiles around the target. It doesn't even push the target. And it only pushes three. Uh, it is free to use. No, it doesn't need any power. Well, that's very weak. Unstable cannon. I uh, saw that in the previous stream. Does one self damage and two damage and pushes both. Medical supplies. Passive effect. All pilots survive death. Well, if you're really worried about your pilot surviving to the next, you know, between missions and you're taking lots and lots of tank dam of damage with your mechs, that would be a nice passive to have, but it's not really what I need. Finally, the burst beam. Piercing beam that decreases in damage the further it goes. Does three damage adjacent, two further on, one further back. And it can be upgraded with extra damage or, and or to make your allies immune to it. I don't want any of them. I certainly don't want any of them enough to sacrifice the power grid. We're doing pretty badly on power there. We're not the most effect effective team at uh, killing enemies, so we've been taking a lot of damage to the grid. So I'm going to buy one core and actually get five power here. It's a shame I couldn't get two cores, because we are desperately short, but the power grid really needs to come first. So that's two islands secured. The question is... Do we do another island? Do we race straight for the final mission? It says it scales to your current progress. We would have one more core to spend. Extra move or something there maybe. Not much hit to spend it on here. Extra health. Extra move acid tip. Again, being able to apply acid is probably... How could you solve the Spartan shield if I'm not using it? Oh, never mind. I could get acid tip. I'm probably wanting to get acid tip regardless of what else we do because that means we can combo up and attack here for two and then another attack there for four, which means we, in a single turn, the two combined could kill a enemy on six health. You know, some of the alphas are six health. Even some of the leaders are six, only six health. Are we ready for the final mission with this squad? It's kind of sooner than I was expecting if we do it, but that means I might just continue the series with one more game, with one more squad. There's still a pile of squads I've not unlocked yet. Let's test the acid tip. So... Acid, but also dead. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Acid it. And he runs away. Okay. You know what? Let's do that. Let's go straight for the final mission now. And then I'll follow up after this episode. With a new squad. Whether we win or lose. <laughs> Hopefully we win. Follow up with a new squad. And then do the desert and ice islands. With that squad. Because here we did Archive and Detritus. I've only done the final mission uh, successfully once before. I think I got to it once and failed. I can't remember. So let's go to the last stand. We've got full power on our grid, so we're really in good shape to do it. And if we tackled another island, that might not be so great. We have a Scorpion Leader with seven health. Unfortunately, that's not within our range of uh, ability to do... To, uh, I can't even talk. That's not within the range of damage we can do 
with our two unit, two damage dealing units. Or we can, we can obviously freeze him. You know, that might be the best way to deal with him. We don't have any objectives except survive the fight. So now for Hornet, an ordinary digger and an ordinary beetle. And they charge, do one damage and push. If we sit anywhere up here, we're out of range of the uh, Scorpion leader to web us on the first turn, which, you know, is always a nice thing to have. We'll probably have the digger come up and get in our way instead. There's also going to be some pylons. And they're going to drop down as soon as we have uh, placed our units, so we'll find out where they arrive then. We just don't know just now. It's going to be a flow of lava too, so I probably don't want to sit here because I don't want to risk getting webbed. You know, uh, no, that won't happen. You can't get to that area. So that's probably safe. Let's do that. We're not very attractive to the girls, I think. Or maybe that. Yeah, let's do that. Piles of pylons. Dropping from sky. Hello, lava. Well, that's nice work from the digger there. I like that. We well, don't need to worry about the digger at all. However, we do need to worry about the Scorpion Leader, and unfortunately, he's placed himself between a power pylon, which we couldn't predict, and us. So, we're going to do one damage to that pylon if we shoot him from here. Now, the Scorpion Leader does damage all around it, so really, we should be not trying to kill it, but just push it out of the way, do two damage to and acid, he'll end up there, and he'll do two damage to this unit. And he attacks first. But he won't push it, so we also have to deal with this unit. And we have a Hornet to deal with as well. Now, unfortunately... Let's see... Yeah, unfortunately I'm not sure that Prospero can get anywhere to actually take one damage. Now, I can't sit on the lava flow, I don't think. Well, actually, it says the tile here will turn into lava, so I'm a flying enemy. It won't actually hurt me. But it also won't... Well, it would free me from the ice, presumably. Maybe set me on fire. I really don't know how that's going to work out. I could just sit there... I could just sit there and freeze the Hornet. I'd probably be safe. The Hornet would be frozen and no problem. Huh. What else can I do? What if I do, what if I do things differently? Also, with only five movement, one, two, three, four, five. With five movement only, both ends can't actually get here to attack the beetle, which means the beetle will still hit this power pylon for one, that's not great. We'd be pushing that in for one, we'd be hitting it for one, that's two, potentially two grid damage on the first turn. We are at max, we can afford to take some, but not, still not a lot. You could come here, bash the beetle and push it, and instantly acid it, and it would be sitting there. It'll be set, set to do one damage here. No, we need, to, we need to move him out of the way. We must move him, otherwise he'll kill the pylons. Both of them. So one thing I'm uncertain of in this game is I don't know whether the 17% applies to a single attack or to whether, whether if there's two buildings there whether it rolls twice, or when it's two damage, maybe it rolls half as much to account for the extra damage that the building. I don't know how that works. Um, I think it's just a single roll per attack. Which, if we were betting on crit defense, actually means letting a single attack go ahead is, is a preferable outcome to having two 
attacks on it. But we don't need to do two attacks on it. We can let one attack happen. Because I don't think we can stop that one. So we can come here, push an acid it. But we can actually then move up here and shoot him. Which will knock him into that. And do four damage. That will kill him. Right? Yeah. That's total of seven damage. We can kill him this turn. Now, the only risk I have is if I freeze, maybe mistake here, and the lava doesn't free him up from the ice, then he's pretty stuck there. We're gonna have, well, that rock's gonna be that rock's gonna be there. I guess we're gonna have a passage up here, which we could th theoretically shoot down with the power pylons on the opposite side. Yuck! Uh, to free him from ice, it's probably okay. I want to find out. I do want to find out what the interaction is there. It just says uh, this tile will turn into lava. It does not say that it will kill an enemy here. It will kill the digger because the digger can't fly, but we fly. And we, our units can actually sit in lava just fine. They just catch on fire if they do so. I'm hoping the ice is going to protect us from that. We'll find out. We're definitely sitting on the ground now, so we should fall into lava. Hopefully. It worked out that that melts the ice and we fly free without catching fire. But I guess we'll find out. Alright, so let's kill this leader. While we can. Unfortunately, that's two damage to us. I don't like that much. But I would rather have him dead. I'll deal. Or I won't deal. We'll just have to wait and see. What happens with our flying unit? Falls in the lava and flies. Brilliant, it's not on fire. Unfortunately, let's damn it, a building got hit. Alpha Hornet, Alpha Scarab, ordinary firefly. So, good news is the beetle is not attacking anything we care about, it'll just run to the edge of the map once we're out of the way. Uh, what's happening here? Fireball will strike here, destroying anything present. So that should kill this entirely. The ice should not protect it. So that's nice. That leaves a Scarab's attack to neutralize, Firefly's attack to neutralize, and another Alpha Hornet's attack to neutralize. And three units with which to do so. Once again, this is kind of bad. We're kind of limited on options for where we can sit and take a single point of damage if we wanted to freeze a unit. On the other hand, what's his attack? His attack is one. Oh, I can't get around there anyway. Can I either of us get around there? No. If we want to bash it, we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to sit here. I take two damage from his attack, that's no good at all. Can't freeze anything if I sit here. I could have I could just sit here and freeze the beetle. Um, presumably the exact same thing would happen again. We'd freeze, we'd fall into the ice, we'd unfreeze immediately. Sorry, fall into the lava and unfreeze immediately. Or we could freeze the Alpha Firefly for the same effect from here. Okay. That's maybe an idea. Freeze the firefly, then what? How do we deal with these two? Obviously there's an easy push. This is a problem. We don't want to take it. we don't want to sit in acid and be hit for two damage if we can avoid it. If we can't avoid it, so be it. But uh, the other problem is if we do go there and fire at the speed, we're still hitting the pylons opposite, so that's not Great. That's not great at all. What else? Can we sit on the water and freeze anything useful? No, we can't get here. Um, is there anywhere here we could freeze ourselves? Can we 
freeze that one somehow. We don't see it. So we're thinking we could bash that and that's it. Well, that's not really matter, but bash it. It'll be flying above here. Then we sit here, we accept that we're going to take two damage. It's really, really bad. You know, we'll have two units on one hit point. But, you know, and then we can disrupt the beetle's attack. And, put, and block a spawn with it, and kill the hornet. Otherwise the hornet would attack these two spaces. But, you know. Uh, who attacks first, actually? The scarab attacks before the hornet. So that's one plan. That unfortunately leaves our tank taking damage from the scarab. And it leaves this fireflies attack free. We can move, say, here and freeze it, but then we're frozen, and we've got two units left to deal with one, two, three, four, five enemies. No, four. We'll be blocking one spawn. Two units for four enemies is just not brilliant. I would so love to be able to get to this side of the Scarab and push it that way onto the acid. It would take two damage, and actually get pushed. We'd have to be out of the way. And it'll block this one, and its attack would be cancelled. It'd be it'd be a very nice combo, but this firefly is just in the way. We have five movement. One, two, three. Well, uh, Esther could never make it, but if the firefly was dead, then Omar, one, two, three, four, five, could actually get around there to do that. But we can't kill the firefly to make room, and we still then have the hornet to worry about. Well, I can freeze the hornet. But pushing the Firefly one to one side or the other here just really doesn't help. Just really doesn't help. It's a pity I can't pull it to here. That'd be uh, solve another two problems with one stone. But uh, I've only got a Prime Spear, which is really just good for pushing and doing a bit of acid damage. So I think that's a pipe dream. We just can't can't push effectively. What if I freeze the Hornet, sit here, tank the damage, so be it, push him, his attack is hitting there, he's sitting on the spawn, he takes two damage from my push, he'll, and then I also push the Firefly, he'll take another damage from the Firefly, and one more from blocking the spawn, so he'll die, we'll have a wounded Firefly, frozen Hornet, and an active Beetle, and two new spawns to worry about, so, four enemies, one badly wounded and on acid. Uh, we'll be on one hit point with all three of our mechs. It's just not brilliant. Not brilliant at all. So I do actually have this other weapon that I've never, I bought but never really used. It lets us nullify two attacks with smoke. Uh, in a in a cross kind of pattern. Well, actually, after five attacks. So we could, for example, fire it there, nullify both the scarab, nullify the attack, stop the attacks of both the scarab and the beetle for no damage. Then we don't get to shoot. But that might be alright. We can then freeze the hornet. We could freeze the hornet. And we could bash the firefly here. That leaves us with a wounded firefly, two healthy units here. And three more units spawning. That's six enemies next turn. But we won't take any extra damage. That's the only plus side. I'd rather have fewer enemies and be on one hit point and have to try and avoid damage. I would much rather that than have six enemies to deal with. We're still, you know, there's still two turns after this one. It's going to be tough either way. They don't call it the last stand for nothing, I guess. So, oh, I see the problem with my uh, plan. If I sit here, I fire the beetle, I hit pylons the other, going the other way. If I sit here, I fire at the firefly, I hit pylons going the other way. This is, my plan A just doesn't work. I'd have to come here, I guess. Oh, that could work. That could work out. No, it wouldn't. Because this one can't safely sit here and bash the beetle. Because I take acid, I 
and then take two damage from this attack, and then one from the Firefly, you know, that's total four damage, and I've only got one hit point anyway, I would be thoroughly, thoroughly dead. That would be terrible. That would be terrible. Okay. And I don't really want to risk us destroying these things, it's just uh, really not what we should be doing. Okay. Alright, so let's think of another plan. What if I attack the Hornet and push it here, but I still attack that for one? Um, then what? It takes two damage. I could push it again, but then it will die. Also, we can't actually use it to hit the beetle, but it wouldn't kill the beetle either way. So I'm not sure that leads to a solution. We don't have to sit in the way of the beetle, so it comes running up here. But again, doesn't really look like a solution. We have a hornet. We have a beetle lose attack. We can't, still can't do anything about because I can't bash it without sitting there or there, and I can't fly, so I can't attack from there. The only units I can really safely freeze is the beetle or the other hornet. And I can only freeze the beetle from here, so pushing the hornet here and then trying to freeze the beetle isn't going to be fine. I'm not sitting there because it will destroy things. Yeah, I don't like any of these options. I don't like any of these options at all. Unfortunately, the way this pattern works, we can't cancel the Firefly and the Hornet, or the Hornet and anything else. So, you know... Oh wait, does that work anywhere on the map? Anywhere on the map, it's a single use. Okay. So we can drop it there, for example. Um, or there. But maybe here in the middle of the map is not actually where we want to block attacks from. Maybe it is, it's next to Pylon, so it's defends this pylon from two directions. Well, we could defend that pylon from two directions. Well, it's already defended from, from two, so from one more direction. It's going to constrain our movement if we do that. So let's say we do that. Then what? We can bash the hornet to here. She flies over the lava and attacks the beetle for us. These two don't get an attack off. Come around here and shoot the firefly, it will hit the scarab the one. Then three new enemies spawn. On the plus side, we don't take damage, and no pylons take damage. We still have then the option of freezing something, but it can't be the hornet. So it could be the beetle, for example. No, we can't reach it. Uh yeah, then we really can't freeze anything we care about. Not, not the end of the world, so we can't freeze anything. Um, it's better than being frozen in ice ourselves. I don't, think, I don't think we can, like, we can fire this at the ground, and it will turn it to snow, but I don't think that's useful. I don't think it'll freeze. I don't think it'll mean the enemy that spawns it will freeze. So... This is good. This actually blocks. Will will neutralize one space for these for this pylon. This one here, so nobody nobody can attack from there. It'll neutralize both these spaces, and nobody will be able to attack from there. That that makes both these pylons quite a bit safer. We're not going to swear. Well, we'd have to move out of the way. We can move first uh, if we want to. We can't block a spawn or anything. So, but we can actually obstruct enemy movement. Wait, 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 this doesn't add up. This doesn't add up. I was thinking, drop smoke, then use the spear on the horde, then use both ends on the firefly. But, the firefly, if, if, fire, if uh, both ends is dropping smoke, then we can't shoot it. So that means, if we're dropping smoke, we're going to have to cancel the firefly's attack as well as the... Scarabs. 
then we just have to be out of the way so the beetle runs. And let the hornet do its thing. We can't push the firefly. And maybe we just freeze the hornet anyway. Just for good measure. No. Well, maybe we don't bash the hornet. Maybe we just freeze the hornet and bash the firefly. Yeah, I like that plan. Let's move up here so we've got a little closer to the action and freeze this firefly. Now we don't freeze ourselves thanks to the hovering above the lava. That's uh, a very nice side effect. Let's. Well, we can't move there because we want to move in your face there. Actually, he's going to bash the Firefly anyway. So we're back on plan A, aren't we? Uh, I don't want to block spawn with him. He's only on one hit point, so let's just deal some damage there. Oh, well, now here's the thing. <laughs> it's very tempting. At a risk of one grid damage, we nearly kill the beetle, we do kill the firefly, but then we can't nullify the scarab's attack. Oh, and god damn it, I fucked up. I have fucked up. I need you to move out of there first, now I can't get out. And I can't nullify the scarab's attack. So we're gonna get hit for one point. Do I reset, or do I take it? I can still drop it there. Problem is we might get and get stuck here for good next turn. Which would not be good at all. So I reset. I reset and do this again. Freeze the hornet. Move safely out of the way here. Bash the firefly. And who attacks first? The Beetle attacks first, so it will kill the Hornet for us. Which is good. Oh no, wait, it won't kill the Hornet for us, because we're nullifying its attack. Well, there's a thought. Maybe we just drop smoke there to stop the Beetle and protect this pylon. And let... Let the Beetle... Sorry, stop the scarab. Let the Beetle attack the Firefly, but it would push it into us and damage us. But it will be dead. And with three new enemies spawning, I know, I don't know, I might prefer a dead enemy and one damage. I think I do. Let's do it. And we just leveled up. Ouch. And there's a blast scion. Blast. So. Hang on. Let's see what happens. Omar just leveled up and got plus one mech reactor, which is not very useful because we can't reassign it and we're in the final battle. So, uh, you know, plus, plus two HP at this point would have been handy, but, you know, whatever. Take what we get. So we have an Alpha Scarab threatening some pylons, but it's positioned nicely to push into the water. We have another Alpha Scarab threatening us, but that's no problem. We have the Alpha Beetle, also positioned nicely to be pushed into water, but he's threatening a pylon. We have another Alpha Beetle threatening us, and it would kill us. We're not, we're not very robust right now. More importantly, we can't stay where we are because, uh, well, no, we're all going to take one damage at the end of the turn. So we, because of the Scion, the Scion Tyrant. So we do need to kill the Scion Tyrant. There's going to be more lava over there, but that's irrelevant. So how can we do this? We have a pylon under attack here and a pylon under attack there. So we have three things to deal with. Scion, two scarabs, anything else can wait. So we can freeze the scarab from here, no problem. We could then come up here, shoot the Scion Tyrant and kill it. But, oh, actually, you can bash it. Can, no, neither of you can really get to a place to deal with this one. So we're going to have to freeze that one. If we freeze that one. Um, 
No more. We can sit on acid, shoot this and the pylons. No, that's no good. We can't get around here to bash it out of the way. We can push it from here, but not from here. And we can't sit there because we're going to take uh, be attacked by the uh, beetle there. This is a dilemma. We can sit here, move them out of the way, and then shoot the beetle. Then you come up here, bash that. Oh wait, it's not the beetle we need to worry about. I'm getting it all wrong, it's the... Uh... Sorry, it's not the scarab we need to worry about, it's the, it's the alpha beetle. He does one hit point of damage, so Omar could tank him. Stupid, but we could. We could kill this beetle, take one more hit. We come up here and destroy the, ty the tyrant, and we freeze this scarab, and we hope like hell that next turn is easy. Next turn is the last turn. There's two more spawns. Uh, one of them will be... No, he'll be dead, so it won't be blocked by him. And he'll be here, so it won't be blocked by him either. So we'll have one, two... Two, three, four. Four enemies left to deal with next turn. That's gonna have to do. The Scion needs to die. Unfortunately, he's not lined up with anything, so we're gonna get a double hit. We'll put some acid there, hope an enemy steps on it. Hope we don't have to step on it. Freeze the Scarab. I, I am liking this lava. It's been very useful uh, for Prospero to not freeze himself because there's nothing else attacking him. Um, we're gonna take some damage. Only, only one. And we're gonna shoot this beetle into the water. Final turn. Two of our units on one hit point now. Oh, and he hit the beetle for us. I forgot about that. Alright, there's good news and bad news. So we've got the volcano attacking again, and it's going to kill the beetle for us. So we don't have to worry about the beetle. Scarab is attacking some pylons. And the Alpha Crab is also attacking pylons and us. And we're kind of stuck there. That is covered in acid, so we can't actually kill it. But we can't move after we kill it. But it's the final turn, so I can always move up here. And freeze the crab. So we kill you, he's going to die, kill you, and... We can actually push both of these into the water at once for Omar. Brilliant. Splish. Freeze. And bash. And I think we have survived the first round of the final fight. Taking only one building damage. Kaboom. Great. So we're still pretty healthy overall. That's, uh... That is a surprise. Bunch more power pylons. So, I'm um, gonna get a bomb coming down now, and it's gonna squash that uh, scarab sitting next to us. Unfortunately, it's not gonna squ squash anything bigger. This is going to be fun. However, I'm going to take a break right here and resume this in the next episode. So, see you then.